During the breeding season, eggs and sperm are spawned, that is shed from the ovaries and testes, respectively, into the seawater by the contraction of the muscle layers of the gonads. The gametes flow during spawning from the gonad through the gonaduct and gonopore into the surrounding seawater. The presence of gametes in the seawater acts as a stimulant for the shedding of sex cells of an individual of the opposite sex, but the nature of the signal how it is communicated is unclear. As gametes are shed, fertilization takes place in the surrounding seawater. As sperm approach the jelly layer surrounding the egg, they undergo the acrosomal reaction. Fusion of the egg and sperm initiates the cortical reaction. Just beneath the egg's plasma lemma is a monolayer of cortical granules, each approximately one half to one micrometer in diameter. Fusion of the cortical granules with the egg's plasma lemma occurs in a wave-like fashion, beginning at the point of sperm contact and radiating out circularly along the entire surface of the egg. As fusion occurs between the cortical granules and the egg's plasma lemma, the contents of each cortical granule are expelled by exocytosis into the space between the egg's plasma lemma and the enclosing vitelline envelope. Several different substances are expelled. Some of the expelled substance joins with the vitelline envelope, causing it to harden and to elevate, forming the fertilization envelope or membrane and the perivitelline space. Inside the cytoplasm of the egg, the male and female pronuclei approach one another and undergo syngamy, which means that they fuse to form the zygote nucleus. Shortly thereafter, the first cleavage occurs. After fertilization, the zygote undergoes cleavage. The sea urchin egg, like all eggs, contain an animal vegetal axis. However, the animal pole and the vegetal pole are not readily discernible except by the fact that the egg nucleus, or zygote nucleus, resides near the animal pole. In the sea urchin, the entire egg undergoes cleavage, or also known as holoblastic cleavage. The first cleavage plane passes through the animal vegetal axis and splits the zygote into two blastomeres. The second cleavage plane also passes through the animal vegetal axis, but is oriented perpendicular to the first. The third cleavage plane produces eight cells and is equatorial. Experiments reveal that individual blastomeres are no longer equivalent at the eight cell stage and that isolated blastomeres can no longer form an entire larva on the parts of the larva. Cleavage becomes irregular after the third division occurs. Thus, in some species, there is a distinct 12 cell stage preceding the 16 cell stage. When the fourth cleavage is fully completed, three tiers for a total of 16 cells are established. A tier nearest the animal pole consisting of eight plastomeres that are now called the mesomeres. A tier nearest the vegetal pole consisting of four small smaller blastomeres that are now called the micromeres. And a tier in between consisting of four larger blastomeres that are now called the macromeres. Cleavage ultimately establishes five tiers of cells for a total of 32 cells. The eight mesomeres in the animal hemisphere divide to form two tiers of eight cells each. The upper tier of eight cells are now called the AN sub 1 blastomeres, and the lower tier of eight cells are now called the AN sub 2 blastomeres. The four macromeres divide longitudinally to form one tier of eight blastomeres, all of which are still called macromeres. The four micromeres divide to form two tiers of four cells each. The upper tier of cells are called the large micromeres, and the lower tier of cells near the vegetal pole are called the small micromeres. The sea urchin embryo between 32 and 64 cell stage can be called the morula, that is, a ball of plastomeres. 
The sixth cleavage ultimately produces 60 cells, not as the expected 64, because the four small micromeres, unlike all other blastomeres of the 32 cell stage embryo, do not divide during this cleavage cycle. During subsequent cleavages, blastomeres become arranged around the central cavity called the blastocele. In the developing embryo, this stage is called the blastula. That is, with formation of the blastocele and blastula, the process of blastulation occurs. Cilia develop on the outer surface of the blastula. Those at the animal will become particularly long and are called the apical tuft. In the late blastula stage, cells begin to detach from the vegetal pole of the blastula and to move into the blastocele. That is, these cells undergo ingression. The ingressing cells are called the primary mesenchyme cells. Approximately 64 primary mesenchyme cells eventually form. During the late blastula stage when primary mesenchyme cells are ingressing into the blastocele, the blastula is often referred to as mesenchyme blastula. The blastula begins to rotate within the fertilization membrane at the late blastula stage through the action of its cilia which beats synchronously. The blastula produces an enzyme at about this time called the hatching enzyme. The hatching enzyme weakens the fertilization envelope and movements of the blastula eventually rupture the fertilization envelope, allowing the ciliated blastula to hatch. These are the processes of castrulation in typical sea urchin. Gastrulation is the most prominent morphogenetic event in early development, resulting to formation of three germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. In sea urchins, it has two distinct phases, the primary invagination and the secondary invagination. Hatching blastula stage. Embryos are composed of monolayered epithelium and spherical in shape. Early mesenchyme blastula stage. The vegetal plate thickens. A small number of primary mesenchyme cells appear in the blastocele. Middle mesenchyme blastula stage. Ingression of the PMC culminates. The PMC is the primary mesenchyme cells. Late mesenchyme blastula stage. Most PMC have entered the blastocele. The vegetal plate becomes somewhat thinner at this stage than the preceded stages. Beginning of primary invagination. The vegetal plate bends inwardly. Early gastrula stage. Primary invagination completed and a stub-like gut rudiment forms. Secondary mesenchyme cells, SMC, appear at the tip of the gut rudiment. Middle to late gastrula stage, the gut rudiment is stretched along the animal vegetal axis by contraction of the SMC filopodia. Late gastrula stage, the archenteron cells are rearranged and slender archenteron forms. Early prism stage, recruitment of the archenteron cells continues as the ectodermal layer expands. Mid-prism stage, a constriction appears between the esophagus and stomach. Late prism stage, late recruitment of the endodermal cells are completed. The cells that had invaginated by the end of the secondary invagination occupy the esophagus and the anterior half of the stomach. <laughs>